Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar here. I'm here in New York City and I'm very honored to be joined by Giuseppe, the head of product at Longines. So we have a whole just new release of products in front of us and I definitely want to dive into these new 2022 releases, but you've been with the brand for three years and when looking at the brand and even just the longer time frame, I think what you guys do very well is marrying this idea of reverence to the past while also trying to incorporate contemporary touches to keep things moving forward. Could you talk about the philosophy that you have as a designer? Where do you, where do you go when you're starting a new like, line? Do you look back in the archive? Like, could you kind of give us an abbreviated approach that you guys have when you're developing a new piece? So, hi, Teddy. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining as well. Um, so, basically what we do is that we definitely look at our pa in our past, in our archives, and we have an incredible team at saint imier in Longines. Uh, we have a heritage uh, branding and heritage department mm -hmm. that looks really in, on every stories, every details uh, when we ask for. And even they provide incredible stories, like every day we, we discover new stories about uh, existing product, about new product that we are developing. So definitely we work closely with our branding and heritage department to investigate on our past, but obviously to uh, forward thinking in sure. terms of components, in terms of material, in terms of accuracy of our movement. So we are really uh, deeply inspired by our roots, but uh, we look forward to, to, uh, to develop really new and contemporary design and products. Let's talk about some designs then. So yeah. we have a list of new collections that you're unveiling. Uh, for this year. Some of them, of course, are just refreshes, new dials and different approaches, but do you mind us just walking us through some of the new releases for this year? Let's take a closer look. Yeah. So we will start the year with um, some Legend Divers uh, animation. Perfect. As you know, Legend Diver is really a unique design, but driven by the function. So it's the super compressor mm -hmm. design, but uh, originally the super compressor was um, developed to have water resistance. Uh, for these diver watches. So these specific designs with the two crowns. So these are really our, I would say, iconic diving watches. Uh, I almost see this as, when I think of the Heritage Collection, mm -hmm. from a contemporary perspective, I think of these first. And not to say that these are the best, because I'm wearing a, a sector dial right now, but mm -hmm. this just seems to have, when you guys issued, reissued these, in, you know, say about 10 or 12 years ago, it seemed to be like a message like, hey, this is a new focus for us. Mm -hmm. No, you are right. This is a, we strongly believe in this collection, on this design, and uh, it's a long-lasting heritage model on our collection. Yeah? So it will stay and we will continue to develop it. Uh, and yeah, we, I mean, it's so, uh, so you have two new 42 millimeter options. Exactly. With new dials. Now, when you first started here, it's interesting because I'm looking at last three years, more playful colors and things being incorporated, because mm -hmm. even 10 years ago, you look at Longines, it's very about the classic, tradition, which you still are, but you're now doing some more daring things. I think of like some of the bronze case legend divers that you've done with these more like Fume style dials, and you're thinking of like the Avigation Big Eye with your titanium and that petroleum blue dial that you did. What has shifted? Like, I mean, have you seen a good response uh, with just kind of this shift in like color? Like, what, have you, what are you thinking about there? Yeah, we have a great opportunity because we, we are authentic, so we have these heritage pieces, but we can have some uh, modern take on, mm -hmm. on these watches. So really traditional, but for example, if you look at this Burgundy 36 millimeter Legend Diver, yes, it's really trendy. It's, it's a heritage piece, but we, we play a little bit with the colors, uh, so Burgundy, but we keep the, the beige uh, and the old radium Super Luminova to still have the, the vintage flavor, you know, so we can play with colors, with material, we introduce new fabric straps, and it works very well. It's a very versatile uh, piece, I would say. Let's talk quickly about positioning, because I love the 36 millimeter Legend Diver. Mm -hmm. And when you guys unveiled this, like just it's traditional on the bracelet, it's kind of positioned as more of a woman's watch, which I still find for myself, like, hey, you know, looks good on my wrist. What has been the thought process around that type of fluidity on how you're positioning products. Mm -hmm. Because I would say from a, a, like a man's perspective, if they see a product that's marketed to a woman, yeah. then how could I see myself owning that? Not to say like, 
maybe that's we're overcompensating for something, but still it's, it's interesting how that has such an effect and how it's positioned within your collection. Do you guys think about that at all? Absolutely, you are totally right. And we are evolving in this direction. Uh, we try not to position, for example, the 36 millimeter Legend Diver as a woman watch, but as a watch mm -hmm. for everybody, for every wrist. I have a small wrist, actually, so I will choose the 36 and not the 42. Mm -hmm. So we try to change as well uh, this positioning. Same for the Spirit. We are introducing a 37. This is what I'm very excited about. If I'm saying anything on the table that, at least for myself, now I'm speaking more personally as a collector, 37 millimeters for the Spirit, fantastic. Mm -hmm. the, it's exactly the, 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 the right spot for you? Yes, <laughs> sure. You know, vintage lovers and for ladies as well. So this is the, the mid-size unisex, we could call it, 37 for the Longines Spirit collection, which is, which is really the right spot. So we try really to find now a, a size for everybody. Mm -hmm. You can really satisfy vintage lovers, ladies, small gent wrists. So this is our perception. We want to, to bring the, the right size, not being gent or ladies watch. You probably, do you, do you like look at comments online and what people say about mm -hmm. product? Do you like have to like look at that at times? Yes. Okay. Yes. What, what do people say regarding uh, like, you know, the, you know, lug to lug, you see that, the comments. Like, do you guys factor in enthusiast comments and comments that you see online and the designs that you're developing? Like, how much can you take that in and then also keep in mind they might not be a buyer for this piece. Like, how do you guys navigate that kind of medium and that fence that you have to kind of decide what side you're going to land on, right? Um, I have to say that I, I, I read comments, mm -hmm. but you have to be, um, um, you have to manage which comment is really consistent and, uh, and good for the product and for the brand. You cannot satisfy everyone. Sure. You know, the date, no date uh, discussion, it's a never ending story. But definitely we, we check the comments because we want to improve our product. And I think we did a great job on, on this spirit collection to reduce uh, the, the lug to lug distance yes. to have a really nice ergonomics. For me, it's really important to have a nice ergonomics on the wrist because end of the day, you wear the watch. Yes. So we shorten the lug to lug on this product. Uh, we improve the integration of the, the metal bracelet, uh, always keeping our uh, in-house interchangeable system, mm -hmm. quick switch system. Yes. Yeah, that end link, it just shoots, it seems like it shoots down more than it did in the past, because yes. that was one thing, how the previous Spirit, it, it did kind of have a broad uh, mm -hmm. casting presence. Absolutely. This does Absolutely. shoot down more, so I think you did a wonderful job at these. Like this, Thank you. this stands out big time for, for myself, and I think these will be a huge hit. Uh, just where they fall, they're talking about $2,300 in price, was that right? Or? Yeah, correct. Okay. correct. It's amazing. Correct. I also want to talk about this. So the Spirit was your first project. Yes. Big project that you had with the brand. Absolutely. So this seems to be a, a collection you love. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about the new GMTs, which these also have something special going on. New movement, true GMT. Can you give us a little bit of a discussion around that? Absolutely. So first of all, the name of the collection of the product, we, we actually we find a great story uh, in our archive about multiple time zone um, watches. Um, so we started in 1908 to develop a multiple time zone uh, at Longines. And we have a special watch uh, that we deliver to the US market actually, uh, that has a very specific flag printed on the dial which is actually the flag of the Zulu time. You will ask me, what is Zulu time? Zulu time means UTC or GMT, uh, but it is used in the professional aviation. And as you know, Longin Spirit is inspired by aviation and the pioneers uh, from Longines. So it's called the Longin Spirit Zulu time. First in-house caliber, so true GMT caliber for this GMT movement. And you said in-house. So yes. can you talk about the development of that? Because um, around the industry, when you use that term, it has, of course, buzz to it. But like, can you talk a little bit about the development of this movement, mm -hmm. like how, how this was done, and uh, just some of the production and thought mm -hmm. process? So we, we obviously develop all our movements with our sister uh, company, ETA. ETA. Mm -hmm. But these are really launching movements 
because we are the only one using it in the, in the Swatch group. So it's really a Longin movement. Uh, we started the development many years ago um, because we wanted to provide a true GMT movement. We mm -hmm. traveler GMT. It is really important for us because this is the best quality movement you can get. And as all our automatic movement, movement sorry, mm -hmm. uh, it is with a silicon balance spring and we provide a five years warranty. Mm -hmm. So really high standards in terms of quality. Yeah, one thing I've always noticed about, and I think this from like a consumer perspective, we sometimes forget it, mm -hmm. is you guys have a unique opportunity to really kind of tell that story with the movements that you're getting. Because sure, you're working with Edda to produce these, but these are movements that are not found in other watches. You have a, you know, a 3.5 hertz beat rate, which is custom to you. You have these extended powers over 70 hours, silicon balance spring. Mm -hmm. And now you're also getting, like when I think about the Avigation Big Eye, like column wheel chronograph, where it sits in price. Same thing could be said here. Like this is a compelling package and when you're thinking of true GMT watches under $3,000, there's only a select few, if any. You're usually talking about $4,000 and up just for the entry door tier to be able to have that type of uh, complication. So. Yeah, this is beautiful. So you're talking ceramic bezel? Ceramic bezel. Ceramic bezel. And this uh, blue 42. execution, 42 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, bidirectional rotating bezel. We have an interchangeable system uh, as well on this, uh, on this spirit, on the strap, and on the, on the metal bracelet. So we move the date at 6 o'clock. Yeah, you noticed on, uh, oh, these, yes. on these 37 millimeter and on the 42 because we had a very, I would say, authentic approach on the, the very first Spirit collection to be really a uh, pilot watch. And now we are making, uh, we won't make evolve the collection. So we move the date at six o'clock. It's a little bit more modern, you know, uh, on the color execution as well. You have a pop, pop co of color of orange color. Um, so yeah, uh, really a contemporary execution on the, on the Zulu time. This is very nice. Very nice. And a very specific yes. development for the beckon. Yeah, could you uh, walk us through just quickly the... Uh, Absolutely. So, uh, we develop... On the fly adjustment. We develop this uh, very nice deployment buckle. So as you can see, the, the identity of the Longin Spirit is on the buckle with the satin brush finish and polished chamfer. Mm -hmm. And we develop a new fine adjustment system for this watch, that it is totally integrated and hidden. So without taking it off the wrist, you have the ability to just tighten it and also loosen exactly. without taking off the strap. Exactly. And it doesn't hurt the, the leather strap as well. So it's deployant, so it's gonna be not adding mm -hmm. any extra wear and tear. Exactly, and it is really all integrated. You don't see the system, it's really elegant because this is an important topic. On all our watches, we want to be elegant because even on sport watches, we want to be refined and provide elegant watches. So you can wear it with your suit or with a more casual outfit. You yeah, know, this is beautiful. And these are falling just south of 3,000, right at $3,000, you said? Uh, so in Swiss francs, it's 2,850. Okay, so we'll do a conversion rate for us over here. So that's, no, okay. And all chronometer certified as well. Cosk certified, obviously. On all the Spirit collection is Cosk certified, yeah. Talk about, so one thing that people talk about, and we talked about lug to lug as a, as a point, and the fact that you even mentioned as a manufacturer, like most websites don't even say it, right? Mm -hmm. What your lug to lug, but it's a big consumer interest. W talking about the production of this movement and the verticality of this case, mm -hmm. I'm sure you had to talk about that. And I look at all the true uh, GMT movements, you're usually probably struggling to keep this as slim as possible. Is that something of consideration as you were kind of looking at this? Absolutely. Uh, Can you we, talk about we, the challenges of that? Yeah, we, we, we really want to keep it uh, very nice on the wrist, mm -hmm. you know, because it, when it, it has to go under the, sh the shirt. Mm -hmm. We discussed about that uh, recently. Yes. Uh, but as you can see, the case body remained the same thickness of the, as the existing collection. We just added the thickness in terms of the rotating bezel. So we are lucky to have a base caliber 888 that it is really Perfect. We can build a lot of complication based on this caliber because it is well proportioned and it opens us a lot of possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this, the thickness of this is, look, is it right around, just under 14 or? Under 14, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, 
See, like that's a feat in itself if you look at the market because a, a lot of enthusiasts, they have an unrealistic expectation. They think that when you're dealing with these higher complications like a chronograph, like, oh, I want it to be 11 millimeters thick. And mm -hmm. you know, just thinking about you're working around, I have to case up this movement, I have to case up, uh, having a verticality for four hands here rather than three. So it's just more space that you need to have. So I think that's a challenge that I think some people don't even assume is yeah. real. It's a, it's a real challenge and we, we pushed our, uh, our technical guys huh, to, to, to find solution to keep it really well proportioned. So it's a, yeah, it's an interesting um, study. Huh? It's, yes. we, we have to push to push everyone to make the best product. But at the end, when you have it on the wrist, you, you, are, uh, you are happy. And let me add something. Eh? If you look closely to the, the hands, you spoke about the hands. The GMT hand is on the second position. Oh. What was the thought process behind that? So this gives you the possibility to have a long GMT hand going over the applied hour markers. Got it. And to have a nice split between all the hands. You know, because you could have the GMT hands on the first position, making making it very high on the dial, but it, then you have all the hands uh, over, so it's not well proportioned. Here we have uh, um, technical improvement and aesthetical improvement thanks to this uh, uh, hand position of the GMT. And how is the spirit in general? And this is a, a newer line. I, I, you took a lot of your aviation history and roots. How has it been just? received by uh, when you're talking to just well, both retailers from my perspective many enthusiasts like it I think this 37 is going to be an answer to many of the kind of comments like I love the spirit but the lug to lug is a little bit broad for myself so I think this is gonna do incredibly well if I had yes. to predict. So we have really a great success with the spirit collection um, we uh, define this collection to have really the best quality product at the best price possible we achieved, as you can see, really qualitative finishing eh? with mm -hmm. the satin brushed on the side, polished chamfer all along the case body, same for the bracelet. So we wanted really to have our best collection in terms of quality uh, execution with the Spirit. And it is very well received from our, uh, our partners and uh, we, we see that on the, on the result. So we are very happy with the Spirit collection. So new 36s, we have 42 millimeter Legend Divers as well, 37 millimeter Spirits, and then we have the new Zulu Time GMTs. Exactly. I'm gonna get that name right now, there we go, I gotta <laughs> own it. I think very well done. So from here, can you just maybe give us a glimpse of just the, maybe not new products that are coming, but just as you're looking forward, like where do you see like the areas of interest and growth for the brand from a design perspective? Like where do you kind of just see things going? So obviously we have many other novelties for this year. Sure. We are celebrating the 190th anniversary of Longines. Mm -hmm. So we will celebrate this anniversary with many, many new products. So in terms of uh, vision and strategy, we want to bring, as always, the best product at the best price, but we will bring some innovations. Uh, new certifications uh, for our watches, new calibers, always looking on our archive to be able to tell the incredible story of Longines because we have so many technical innovations, so many stories about our pioneers. We are discovering everyday new stuff and we want to, to we want that the people know this story about Longines, okay? But this is important. We want to stay on our, li on our league in terms of positioning, in terms of product, but always increasing the perceived value of the product. Yes. But well, Giuseppe, thank you so much for just taking the time to go through this. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. And I just think it's important though too, because as we're kind of closing out here, these type of discussions, when being able to talk to somebody from the brands making these design decisions, I think as enthusiasts and consumers of these products, we want to get an idea of what was in the brand's head. And at times you just see the press releases and you don't really get a full understanding of what's kind of going on. So I really appreciate, uh, appreciate the time and discussion here today. Uh, but guys, thank you again so much for watching. Um, we'll see you all next time.